It's easy to load bulk film into a 35 millimeter canister. You don't need a bulk loading machine, a changing bag, and some common household items will do. Most of the larger online photography retailers sell reloadable canisters for less than a dollar a piece. The bulk film itself typically costs about $50 a roll. This means that by loading the canister yourself, you will cut your film purchasing costs about in half. Combine that with developing the film yourself, and you've got a great way to enjoy photography. One of the most important aspects about hand loading is the orientation of the canister. Look carefully at this photo. The canister on the left is standing up on its flat end. This is the way we usually see canisters sitting on a tabletop. The canister on the right, however, is standing on the stubby spool projection. The canister on the right is in the same orientation that it would have inside a camera. This is a very important point in hand loading because by using this orientation and also the natural curl of the film as it comes off of the bulk roll, we can load the film with the emulsion facing the correct way, even though we cannot see it or feel it in the changing bag. Remember to orient your spools with a projection facing downward like the film canister on the right. The reloadable canisters have three main parts. There's a ring-like cap, a spool, and a case. We'll need some masking tape and scissors to install the film in the canister. When you get the spool of bulk film, the container will have to be opened only in total darkness. Manufacturers seal the outer containers pretty well. On the left, we have some bulk film made by Kodak. It comes in an outer cardboard box and an opaque aluminum can. This can is sealed with tape where the two halves of the can come together. Inside the can is a plastic bag, and inside that plastic bag is the spool of bulk film. On the right, we see some boxes of Ilford bulk film. The three boxes are in different states of opening. We see a completely sealed box, a box whose seals are broken, but the box remains unopened. And on the far right, we see a box that I've opened in the past and taped shut again several times. The seals the manufacturers put on their containers can be a little tough, but if you try to cut them open or begin to get them open in the light, remember not to open a box all the way. Doing so would fog your film. Most of the rest of the loading procedure would take place in total darkness or inside the changing bag. We place the items that we would normally zip up inside the bag on top of the bag so that we can show the steps. Add in a white cloth to make it easier to see the parts. With the parts laid out and organized inside the changing bag, and the bag zipped up and light tight, we put our arms inside the bag, and then go ahead and open up the box that holds the bulk film. The spool will be inside an opaque vinyl bag. Get the spool out of the bag. It helps to set the spool in the box it came in so that you can find it easily when you cannot see. If the spool is brand new, you may have to remove a piece of tape that anchors the free running end of the film. Even if the film is loose, if it sits in the box like this, it will generally be all right. Peel off some masking tape, about four inches worth, and lay it on top of the spool. Notice we've got the spool oriented like we talked about before. I like to stick the spool with the free ends of the tape to my hand so that as I'm rummaging around inside the bag, the tape will not begin to stick to itself or be a problem. Take up the bulk reel and find the end of the film. For our simulation here, we have an improvised bulk reel made with an old section of film to show the process. Lay the film down on the spool. Use the spool position and the natural curl of film as it comes off the bulk reel to get the emulsion on the correct side. In this case, the emulsion is facing down and away from us. Tape down the end of the film to the canister spool. Give it one turn of a wind around the spool and then slide the spool and the film into the canister case. Cap the spool. Using your arms, pull some slack off of the bulk reel. By working your hands along the edges of the film, you can measure off a few feet of film. The allotment will be rough, so you'll never know exactly how much film you will have in a can, but it'll all be used by you in one way or another when you've measured off the desired amount, usually two or three lengths plus a small allowance for the leader, go ahead and cut the film near the bulk reel. 
wind the film into the spool. It helps to wind using the spool projection to turn the film into the canister and to pinch down with your finger on top when you need to keep tension on the spool. You can wind the film into the spool so that it follows the curved profile of the outside of the can. Leave a couple inches of film protruding from the can. If you wind the film all the way in, you'll just have to disassemble the canister to get it out again. With the film canister loaded, you can load the next one if you had put more than one empty canister into the changing bag to begin with. That would be part of another cycle through the procedure that we've discussed so far. Since we're only loading one canister in our example, it's time to put the materials away. Load the bulk film reel back into the plastic bag it came in, and close it up in the box and set it aside. Now is the time to feel around inside the changing bag and make a mental check to make sure that everything inside is stored in some kind of light tight container. Once we're satisfied that everything's protected, we can go ahead and pull our arms out of the sleeves of the changing bag and unzip the bag. Once we've taken out our box of bulk film, it's only held closed by the shape of the cardboard box, so it helps to tape up the loose ends to keep it from coming open again accidentally. Be careful, we don't want to fog the film. Now in the daylight, we can trim the leader if our camera needs it. For most cameras, the leader trimming is just about an inch of half-width film. If your camera has a special leader requirement as a Leica would, just use your knowledge to trim your film to fit.